I meet a lot of people who say they want to be a marine biologist when they were in high school. They want to be a marine biologist maybe when they were in college. And they decide to go a different route because, hey, you know what? Marine biology doesn't really pay all that much money. And they're right. We all know for us who are in the field that marine biology doesn't pay a lot of money. But you do get a lot in value in terms of what you do for a living. And it takes a certain somebody. It takes a certain personality to be able to commit themselves to working in marine science and conservation to protect that ocean. And to be honest, uh, I get, I do that, I commit myself to do this. And I get it because I'm inspired by the people that I'm surrounded by, by their qualities and the qualities that I grew up with and the values that I grew up with to never give up and to always strive for perfection. We're going to talk about this striving for perfection on this episode of How to Protect the Ocean podcast. Let's start the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to, I'll be honest, it's a bit of a somber episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. This is the podcast where you find out what's happening with the ocean, how you can speak up for the ocean, and what you can do to live for a better ocean. And this episode is about striving for perfection, striving to be the best person that you can be in marine science and conservation. And that is what I've always tried to do. It's what I continue to do. And for the past week, if you follow this podcast in any shape or form, uh, you've noticed that the last week I did not post anything. I did not publish an episode. There's a reason for that, which I'll get into in a little bit, uh, but it was a, a week of reflection for me. Uh, it was it was a week of, you know, wondering how to move forward with not only just conservation, but how do I move forward with the way I've designed my life? Do I need to change it? How do I take what I've been taught my entire life and how do I move forward with that? How do I succeed as a science communicator, as a marine biologist, as an ocean conservationist, as a father, as a husband? You know, how do I do that in my in my best ability? Uh, and 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 that's sort of what I've been doing for the past week. And you're probably wondering, Andrew, why why are you worried about this? Like the podcast, you know, I I enjoy the podcast. You're probably wondering, and I'm glad you do. Uh, and and it's you know people who, who tune in. I'm very blessed you know, to have over two and a half million downloads. And I'm happy to, um, you know, be able to call this podcast successful. Um, I think when every once in a while you have to look at, you know, what you do online or offline or in your life and you have to reflect like, is this what I can need to continue to do? Is this direction I want to continue to take? And is this, you know, what I am more, I think this is the most effective way of doing what I'm doing. And to be honest, the answer is yes. You know, the podcast here is the most uh, effective thing uh, that I need to do and that I'm doing. It is it is highly successful in, in, in my opinion, uh, in the work that I've done and the feedback that I've gotten from each and every one of you. The reason uh, that I, and I'm kind of delaying in telling you this, but the reason why I took a week off uh last week to and and why I reflected just a little on my life is because you know I lost somebody very dear to me uh, my father um, my father passed away last week uh, he was battling cancer uh, he was he was going through chemo treatments and uh, he didn't have much of an immune system and unfortunately he caught covid and along with some other things that were going on with his health, uh, he couldn't beat it. Uh, he was able to pass away peacefully with his family surrounding him, which we are very grateful for. Uh, he was well taken care of at the hospital that he, where he passed. And he battled as much as he could. You know, uh, I feel as though I, I, you know, I have a lot of members of my family who have been uh, touched by cancer. Their lives have been forever changed by cancer. Some of them have have you know, quote unquote, beaten it and others have haven't uh, or they've lost the battle at that moment, not because of lack of trying, not because of the people surrounding them, the team that they had, um, but just because of just circumstances, really, 
uh, a lot of times you do what you can and unfortunately sometimes things just stack up against you. And I don't want this to be a, a somber podcast, but a lot of the reflection that I that I did last week was based off of, you know, what would my dad want? What what did my dad? What was he proud of, and what would he want for me to do? You know, and I think you know I've had a great I had a, a, a fantastic relationship with with my father um you know i've been very blessed for that i've been very grateful for that and it's something that you know i always talk about and i always try to do and and establish with my kids my kids are my two daughters are 14 and 16 they had a great relationship with their grandfather uh every we all had we were very close-knit family and uh it it just when I look back at it and I look at going forward in the future, you know, you you just start to think like, you know, my dad worked his butt off. You know, he worked his butt off when he worked for somebody else in a business. He worked in insurance and he worked his butt off when he decided to start all over and start a new business in his 40s. And he became successful at that. He built a business based on values. He built a business based on people and and having the right people and having great people, not only from a a work perspective, but from a culture perspective. You know, people that we are hearing from today, you know, giving us their sympathies and their condolences and their well wishes, uh, you know, that he affected their lives. And, And so... With that said, from from just from everything that he's done, not only just from a, a business side, but also from a family side, he was very focused on his family. It was his pride and joy. His two sons, myself and my older brother, Scotty, you know, he loved us right, right to the end. Uh, a, a quick little story, right? You know, the, the day he passed, he was he was still able to speak. And my brother and my mom came into the hospital uh, to see him. They, they weren't able to go before because they tested positive for COVID as well. And um, they were allowed to come in and he saw them. He was so happy to see them. And at one point, it was just my mom and, and him. My brother and I gave her some time with, uh, together with him. And uh, he, he looked at her and he kind of looked like very aware. And he looked at my mom and he's like, all right, Judy, let's get the boys I want to go home. It's time to go home. And, uh, and, and and it was like he wanted us to break him out. So he was ready to go home. And that's how much he loved, loved our family. You know, he built this family with my mom and, and they loved us. They were there for us in every shape and form. And, uh, and he just, he did that with perfection as well. And, and he did everything with perfection. He may not achieve perfection, but he strived to get perfection. And I look at this, what I'm doing now, and I look at my life now from a family perspective, uh, from, you know, a science communication perspective, from my career perspective. And, and the one thing that I know he would want me to do is to just keep moving, doing something and then doing it really well. That is the key is doing things at such a level like of, of dedication and commitment to get my message across, to spread awareness of ocean conservation, to you know become what I want to be, to, to achieve what I want to achieve, the goals that I want to achieve. And at some point, you know, before he passed, there were times where, you know, you delay and you you know, you put off things and, and you procrastinate because you have all the time in the world. And, and that's what you think. And you, and you just continue to kind of push things off. You know, we do it all the time, whether it be in our personal lives, personal lives, what we do in our business life, whether we do it in conservation. You know, how many times have we seen governments put off very important monitoring projects, very important infrastructure projects that would help in conservation. They put it off or they delay it or they cancel it because funding has switched to something, quote unquote, more important. 
and then when when it hits the fan we go back and we look at oh if those projects had gone through when we were able to do accomplish what we had accomplished we would be successful right now and and the example is if we had the better infrastructure if we did not take away you know just in ontario for instance if we did not take away or or reduce our funding for you know, preventing forest fires, preventing wildfires from happening, you know, taking away that funding of our wildfire department, we we would be in better shape, you know, or we would we'd probably be in better shape. And of course, hindsight is always twenty twenty, but we see this happen all the time. We see it's just procrastinating. The environment's not that important compared to other things at that specific time. We were very short sighted. You know, we've been warned. Scientists and conservationists and 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 people of all backgrounds and races and religions have been warning people, warning the world that this, if we continue to delay, if we continue to defund environment, environmental projects, then we will eventually pay for it. And, and we are. We did this summer. And we probably will continue for the next number of years before we start to get our act together. And although there, I do believe that there is hope, this happens because we don't strive for protection. We don't strive for perfection. And that's something that we need to do. We need to strive for perfection. We need to, as activists, we need to strive to get what we set out to get. You know, and as as people who are viewing these activists, including myself, we need to stop saying no. We need to stop saying, no, you can't do this. This is not the way it's done. We need to say, we need to do it by any means necessary, as long as people are not hurt. And and we need to strive for that. We need to strive to stop getting governments to approve oil and gas projects just willy-nilly like that. Because their constituents, the people who paid them to be in power to support their campaign, says that they want that to happen. We can't accept that. We can't accept governments taking projects away, environmental projects away, because there's, quote unquote, no funding for it, but there's funding for other things that don't make sense, that are just more about greed. We can't, we can't afford that anymore. We need to strive for perfection. We need to strive and, and stop saying no and stop saying, it would be pretty cool if we we're able to, to accomplish this. It would be pretty cool if we were able to do this. Open our mind and be able to say, let's, let's get this done. Right. And I look at I look at my I go back now. I've been looking through pictures of for the past week of my father and my family and what he was able to accomplish with our support. Just sometimes it's the little battles, you know, uh, one thing that's that has been very important in my family is sports. When we were younger, my dad would work, you know, a full day, you know, when he worked uh, when he worked for somebody else, he would work downtown Toronto. And we lived in, in Scarborough, which is outside of, of Toronto. And he would come home, you know, rush home through the rush hour and drive us across the town for like a 7 p.m. game and just get us there. Like through Toronto rush hour, like across the city and get us to a game an hour ahead. No complaints, you know, other than the traffic, but no complaints with us. Totally there supporting us, giving us a pregame talk every which way we were going. And then taking us home and like, you know, going over the game. You know, and, and, he, and you know, he wasn't one of those hockey dads living vicariously through us. It's, Did you do your best? Did you try everything? You know, how can you do better? How can you try better? And 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 he was just there. Sometimes it didn't matter if it was like earning a lot of money. It was... He was present, he didn't complain about it, and he loved watching his boys play sports, whether it be hockey, whether it be football, whether it be soccer, whether it be baseball. We were involved in a lot, and he was there every single time. And and he succeeded as a father, and the way I want to succeed as a father, the way I want to succeed, he succeeded in business the way I wanted to succeed in business, the way I strive to be to be perfect, knowing I'll never get to be perfect. But if I strive to be perfect, if I set that bar high, I can get there. You know, I can get to where I want to be because he, I know he's done it. And he worked his butt off to do it. And he did make some sacrifices, but he was there for his family. He was there for us. 
and he was there for his his employees. He was there for his business. He was there for even the people he served in his business. And and he did it with like this this ethics and values system that was just amazing. And people loved him for it, including his family. We admired him for it. He made tough decisions. And, and you know, looking back at it this week, and, and, you know, for me, I don't know what this grieving process is going to look like for the next number of years and talking to people who have lost parents before. Um, but I'm going to continually reflect on his work ethic. I'm going to continually reflect on what he was able to accomplish with those values and and that work ethic and not just duplicate it but make it better because i know that's what he would want me to do i know that's what he'd want us to do as a planet you know uh we talked a lot we, we talked a lot about uh science we talked a lot about the planet and conservation and he came at it more you know and sometimes he played devil's advocate he'd come at it more from a, a business point of view and I would come at it more from a science point of view. And we, I think we learned a lot from each other in those little debates. And, uh, and you know, he saw what we could do. He saw just from the projects that are happening what we could do. He knew we, as a, as a planet, as a society, we are a long ways away from accomplishing perfection and from accomplishing even any ounce of, of you know, reclaiming our planet. But it, I, he truly felt that we can do it. And, and it was, it's that work ethic, that, that value system that continues to just get be in the back of my head to say, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to, to go. You know, in this past week of, you know, of taking that reflection, taking a break from the podcast, just because I just, the, the last week and a half has been cr- just amazingly emotionally and mentally draining. And, and I just couldn't do both at the same time is, is grieve for the passing of my father and being there for my family, my mother, my brother, and my kids and my, my wife, um, but, but also be there for you. And I, I apologize for that. I'm back. And, and to be honest, better than ever, you know, with, with more, um, just with more motivation, with more inspiration. And, you know, sometimes when you look at somebody who's gone in the physical sense, you look at what impact they had on your life. And that's what I've been doing with my dad being gone. And, and I look at how I, how I, he would expect me to live, you know, and, and how I know how proud of him, he, how proud of me he was of starting this podcast and being able to continue with it and getting the opportunities that I've been able to have with it. But now it's like, oh, move forward even more. Don't just accept you know, two, two and a half million downloads, get more, reach more people. Cause that's what you wanted to do. It's not a matter of the downloads, it's not a matter of the statistics. It's a matter of reaching more people. It's a matter of making more people aware of what's happening in the ocean and what they can do for the ocean. Give them hope, optimism, and a way forward that we can go and move together. And that's, that's my pledge to you you know, over the last week of reflecting is, is, is be able to, to, to just focus and be able to just continue to bring you content that's valuable to you while you're here on the podcast. You want to know how to protect the ocean. And that's what I'm going to help you do. I'm going to help you protect that ocean. There'll be some, maybe some more content in other forms. And I'm super excited to get back into it. And I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, happy that you took the time to listen to this. I know this is not our normal content, but I feel like I took inspiration from my dad. You'd be able to take inspiration from me. For all those projects where you're just like, you know what, maybe I'll do it later. I don't have time to do it now, but you really want to get to it. The time to do it is now. The time to do it is now because you never know what's going to happen in the future. You know, we are, the, the, the odds of where we are right now and how we got here are stacked against us just from being, constant, just, just from being conceived and just from being born and born where you are, you know, and getting to the age that you are, the, the odds are crazy. And so knowing that you're here now and what you can possibly do and what you want to do and the projects that you want to do, whether it's a side hustle whether it's a full, like a, looking at a full-time job, you just never know 
what's happening. You never know what's going to happen in the future. And you have to live now. I'm not saying quit everything and, and change everything, but you have to start focusing on what makes you happy, what makes you tick. And I know that's what I'm going to do. And I know because I know that's what my father would want me to do. He want all his family members to do that. And so I promise that I'm going to do that. And it's going to start with this podcast and continuing this podcast and getting better with this podcast and then building even more content, maybe outside this podcast. So stay tuned. There's going to be some cool things coming up soon, very soon. And I'm excited to do that. So I thank you for listening. I apologize for this being a little different in terms of content, but I think it's still valuable to you today. And it's part of my grieving process, to be honest. And I'm always honest. I'm always trying to be transparent with everyone in terms of what's going on in my life. And, uh, and I appreciate all of you. And, uh, and, and for those of you who, are, who are, have family members uh, who are going through or who have gone through the battle with cancer, I'm there for you. Honestly, I'm there for you. I truly know what it's like to go through it and what it's like to, to have a loss from it. And, uh, and I'm there for you anytime you need. But that's it for today's episode. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me if you've been listening to this. Instagram, you can DM me at how to protect the ocean. And uh, until next time, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being a part of this audience and being a part of this community on how to protect the ocean. This has been your podcast on how to protect the ocean. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time in happy conservation.